大家好，欢迎来到今年的 DC 粉丝嘉年华，这里有关于 DC 的一切。我是古大白话，是今天的主持人。今天我们有一个专门为中国 DC 粉丝独家定制的环节，一场与 DC 电影制作人和明星的独家跨时空对话。我们也非常开心啊，有幸邀请到了一位中国本土电影人。即将与大家最期待的 DC 电影人和明星一起畅聊 DC 电影的台前幕后，并带来最新的 DC 电影作品的独家消息，你一定不要错过哦！今天我们的特别节目是 DC 备受期待的全新电影大作《新蝙蝠侠》的主创对谈。下面我们首先有请几位主创还有演员。Now this special session is for the Batman. Let's first welcome the director of the film, Matt Reeves. Hi, it's a it's a it's an honor. Thank you. Thank you, and the producer of the film, Dylan Clark. Hi, hi. Thanks for having us. And Catwoman, Joey Kravitz. Hello. And Batman, Robert Pattinson. 那现在有请我们的中国本土电影人。今天我们非常有幸的请到了知名导演陆川，欢迎陆导，欢迎陆川导演。哎、<笑>那陆川导演是中国类型片导演中出类拔萃的领军人物，执导的多部影片兼顾了艺术与商业价值。二零零二年，凭借电影处女作《寻江》入选了威尼斯电影节竞赛单元后。接连为我们奉献了多部诚意作品，如引人深思的经典佳片《可可西里》，严肃深刻的战争史诗《南京南京》，奇幻冒险的特效巨制《九层妖塔》，其作品曾获得圣塞巴斯蒂安国际电影节、东京国际电影节、台湾金马奖、香港金像奖等多项大奖。So let's get started. Thank you all again for your time for the uh DC fans in China. Uh, before I start, I, I'd love to give special thanks to Matt and Robert and Dylan and Zoe. You know,、uh, thank you for the conversation. 我想说，就是这个蝙蝠侠在中国一直是一个非常非常著名的一个电影，然后也是一个非常动人的一个角色。那么呢，非常高兴有这个机会能够采访到各位主创，尤其是你们中间几乎所有人的作品我都看到过。呃，看到过你们以前很多的作品，非常喜欢你们，所以我也代表中国的电影粉丝来对你们进行这次的采访，非常高兴。Well, thank you so much. We're honored. 那么我的第一个问题是给马特的，就蝙蝠侠是一个非常经典的一部影片，呃，之前的蝙蝠侠也做得非常杰出。那么从您的角度看，这次的这个蝙蝠侠的这部作品呢，会有什么样的不同 ？Well, you know, I mean, that's that's the thing is I've been a fan. Of Batman since I was a kid, so it's one of these things where when you get the opportunity to approach a, a character that's that iconic, it kind of you get really excited and you get terrified. And I think the thing for me was I felt that what was important was to do a version of the character that had never been done in quite this way. And for me, I think there are a lot of aspects to it that I'm hoping are going to be very very fresh, which is that the the character.、Um, You know, when you think of what it is to don a, a a bat suit and go out to fight crime, I think the idea of delving into the psychology of that and trying to understand that as it relates to the internal state of the character, so that he becomes he's a very troubled figure, and this idea of him going at somehow being driven to try and find some way to make the conditions in this city somehow better, so that he, that the other people don't have to go through what he went through as a child. What drives somebody like that? And so. I think that's what we worked on in in this version of the story was to try and bring to life the inner life of this character and to put him into what you see in a lot of the comics, which had never quite been done in the movies, which is to watch him in a psychological way get into the case itself. So it's a detective story, it's an action movie, and it's a psychological thriller. And I think the the movies have never quite done it like, that way, and and that was what. We really tried to do. That's what I tried to do: is to try and find a way for us to make it as personal, to make this version、um, come from a point of view that was different from any of the previous ones, while still honoring all the things that people love about Batman, because we're Batman fans. Thank you, Matt. So my second question goes to uh, uh, Robert. You know,、uh, 
I saw a lot, lot of your movies. I'm a huge fan for you. <laughs> OK， 嗯、um, ，这个是你的第一次演蝙蝠侠。那么你为这个角色做了什么样的准备？对于蝙蝠侠，而且你认为不认为这次对你是一个重大的挑战？当然，我还有一个问题，就是因为在《暮光之城》之后，您演了不少的文艺片那么这次是什么原因让你来接受这么一个挑战去演蝙蝠侠的？我非常好奇。对。Um, just want to say thank you very much for the question, and、uh, I just want to say I, I watched your film as well,、um, City of City of Life and Death, and I thought it's it's such an amazing movie. I don't know if you other、uh, like you guys have seen it. It's so good. I just saw it the other day. It's really,、yeah. really, really amazing.、Um, what did I do to prepare for it? I、uh, I had a lot of time. I was shooting another movie for. I had about a year to prepare for it, and、um, yeah, pretty much a year, and. I think I must have read so many comics, Batman comics. I mean, it's insane. I tried. Like, I was looking at my iPad the other day, and it's just full of them. And、um, I was doing that a lot. And it's, but it's interesting because the, it, Matt is right. I mean, it's a, it's a different iteration of the character, and、uh, and even though it's a different angle on it, I kind of wanted to absorb as much of it, the legacy of the character as possible. I mean, try and. See how you can both use it and kind of find、uh, the the gaps. I think I felt like I needed to know as much about the history of the characters as,、uh, as possible to see what hadn't really been done,、um, and it was very very helpful. And kind of and finding little tidbits from, I mean, really from like the golden age of it right up until stuff that was coming out. Weeks before we even started shooting, I think I was looking at a lot of the the I think the、uh, Tom King stuff, which was coming out as I was shooting my, the movie I did previously.、Um, and then, as soon as I finished the last movie, I went straight into one of the major things about it is just training. I mean, you, to, you know, you have to be you have <laughs> you have to believably be able to beat up. You know, fifteen guys or whatever, and I had about three months. I think, oh, I'm actually less than that, two and a half months,、uh, to kind of get in as kind of, I, I guess, in some ways, a bigger and、um, but just look stronger. And luckily, I mean, the way the character was written, he was it, it's early Batman, so it's not he's not a huge.、Um, Kind of bruiser. I mean, you're a guy. You're kind of fast. I mean, there's a lot of the comics are drawn like that. I mean, they're kind of. He's in some iterations. He's this huge guy, and other times you're just strong and fearless.、Um, so I did a lot of that kind of stuff.、Um, but yeah, going from kind of art house films. I mean, it's weird. I always. I see everything as an art house film. <laughs> really, too, like I mean, and like, and the more I kind of dig into something, I mean, I don't approach it in any way differently. Like I think I, like my instincts try and find the strangest aspects of a story and try and emphasize that because that's just what I find interesting and it feels the sort of freshest to me.、Um, but Batman, you know, it's weird with these characters that have such a history. You.、Uh, People look at the iconography of it, and they're so familiar with it that you don't see the strangeness anymore. But if you kind of dig back into it, at the most basic level, the story of Batman is incredibly strange and doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, it's completely—it's coming from a—you're coming from a very troubled, kind of a slightly deranged place.、Um, And then to try and find the reality of that is is really really fun. And、uh, I mean, seeing bits of the movie, it's nice to see that it's kind of it kind of works. And it's you know he doesn't know, you know, people see Batman as just this kind of just straight heroic character. And in our story, you know, it really questions what the nature of being a hero is. And it's kind of、uh, you know it gives a different lot of different angles to it. Okay, 谢谢 Robert， 谢谢。Thank you, Robert. OK， 我们的下一个问题是给 Zoe， 那也是同样的一个问题，就是因为猫女是一个非常迷人的这个角色，猫女非常迷人。那么你是怎么去准备这个角色的呢？我非常好奇。对 ，Charming, thank you. <laughs>、um, you know, Matt really did such an incredible job of creating a character on the page and. So much of this particular story is about her history, 
So it was really important that I kind of stuck to the script in terms of who this character is because where she comes from and um, where she is emotionally is a very important part of the story and I wanted to keep that very specific and um, so I, I actually chose not to um, you know really think of her as Catwoman and my fear was get, getting distracted by so many like shiny ideas you know from all of the different comments and all the comics and all the different versions of her and so um, I, I really wanted to focus on this particular story and this particular moment in this person's life so um, I, I really focused on, on the character that, that Matt had created. OK,那我有一個特別的問題想問Zoe,我很想希望他能夠回憶一下他第一次接到這個角色的那個瞬間他是什麼感覺,或者說他是怎麼接到的,是收到了一個秘密的電話from okay. Dylan還是說from Matt,然後他當時的是一個什麼樣的感覺,就說邀請他,他接到這個invitation,這個offer來演這個貓女,他當時的什麼感覺,對。I got a phone call from, from Matt, um, and it was like Christmas morning, you know, I had been waiting for, um, I don't know, a week or so, I can't remember how long it was, and my phone, my phone rang, and they said, Matt's going to call you, and, you know, I was, I jumped up and down on the bed, <laughs> and, you know, I'll never, I'll, I'll never forget, you know, that day, because there was an announcement that came out later the day, and, you know, every single person that had my number, ev cousins I haven't heard from, like my neighbors from when I was a kid, like every single person I knew reached out to me and it was like, you know, even on my birthday this many people don't call me. Like it was, you know, yeah. incredible. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, a, that was a very, very memorable day. I, I was in shock. <laughs> 好,我們下一個問題,我是給Dylan的,其實跟剛剛的問題有點相似,就是這個Dylan是怎麼去選擇他的心目中的這個Batman和這個貓女的,對? Well, you know, first of all, they are perfect, just look at how they answer these questions with such um, sincerity and depth, and Matt and I had a very long process, you know, Matt and I made two movies together on the Apes movies prior to this, and we really um, share, a, share a belief in a process and it was a long writing phase and during the outline phase Matt would come to me with thoughts about actors and very early on both you know both these these two beautiful faces appeared in Matt's head as he was writing and and it was clear because you know Rob as you said has been doing this really interesting work you know we were such giant fans of good time and you know he was t making bold cho choices with the lighthouse and there was an intensity to him as an actor that just seemed to kind of capture the, the spirit of what Matt was writing for this Batman. And Zoe is just, you know, she's this powerhouse person. And one of Matt's inspirations as he was writing was Frank Miller's Year One. And Selena in that Year One depiction was this really cool, mysterious, tough, yet vulnerable person. And, and, and Zoe just, you know, has all those characteristics. But you know, it really was, you know, just who these two people are as, as actors and I think people that, um, that just want it. And then when you, again, when you see them, I, I just, I look at them now and I just, there's no other Batman and there's no other Selena Kyle. This is who they are. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, my next question is to ask the director. Because Bian Fuxia is a very good director and very good director. 那麼在這樣一個新的這個蝙蝠俠中,他是怎麼既能夠去傳承這麼一個傳統,偉大的一個傳統,同時又能把自己的新鮮的,有創意的想法注入到這個新的蝙蝠俠裡面呢?對。For me, like as I said, I I love this character since I was a kid. So there's a there's an immediate reverence and affection for the character, and yet I think, you know, when you're making a movie, it's interesting because I made a lot of essentially genre movies from the Planet of the Apes and Cloverfield and kind of things, but I always approach everything, you know, what I find is that genre allows you to have the cover of something, which is iconic in some way, but under that you find the, the thing in the metaphor that allows for something personal. I always try to find a way to ground it in something I can relate to, and so to be totally honest, I think for me it was trying to figure out what it would be to be this guy for real. 
Like this is such a crazy idea. As, as, as Robert said, it's like a, it's not a normal thing to do. And so to try to delve into that psychology and trying to find the way in which you can put yourself into that character's sort of pain and that person's obsessions and try to find all of these ways, because there are all these ways in which the story is very sort of bold and iconic, right? That's what, that's the idea is you have these big sort of um, iconic qualities. But it's about finding the specificity of, of sort of what, um, what the character is going through and then trying to find a way, for me, I think, what we tried to do, like obviously the movie, this movie I think is probably the scariest Batman that's been done because the idea of what Batman is doing is actually, it's scary. And actually the connection between him and the rogues gallery, like the, you know, the rogues gallery as they call them here, the, the other villains, um, like the Riddler in this story, he's very scary. And I would say that the iteration of the character, I tried to find in my mind what was the real sort of, um, version of this. So, like the idea is like instead of going in sort of reverse, where you try to create a character from something um, and that's that's real, and then the character is created here. I tried to find okay, so wait, what is like this in real life? And in the case of the Riddler, I was inspired by and like the Zodiac, who's a very famous serial a serial killer here, who was never captured, and he would communicate through frankly through ciphers and riddles. And I thought, well, gee, isn't that what the Riddler does? He's leaving all of these things, and so then why is this guy doing that? And how does that crime work? So it was like trying to find the way in which you take all these fantasy sort of aspects of the story and find the real world sort of connection to it so that we could find, for us, what we were trying to do every day was to, okay, what if this was real? How would we do it? And what would that all mean? And so I think probably that's the thing, is to honor it by trying to find the way to sort of embrace all of the things that people love about the character, the things that we love about the character, but then to try and find a way, which for me is always the key to everything, is to find the way in which that character is like you, is human like you, is flawed like you. And to do that for all of the characters in such a way that when you look at it, you feel like, oh, this feels fresh because actually, not only is he a hero that I can relate to, but he's actually reminds me of me or of something that I understand about who we are as people. So it's to allow for all the flaws, not to just make somebody just totally heroic, but to look for them sort of in their totality. Robert. 就是我也是很好奇就是Robert是怎么会 I mean, I always tried to make my movies blockbusters and commercial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I mean, I kind of, it's weird. I can't, I, I've just like, I've always just very much followed my uh, instincts about stuff and, uh, and, and really, really depend and rely on them. And there was just something about Batman because I was when I was saying earlier, like when I first talked to Dylan about it, there wasn't even a poss there wasn't really a possibility. Like when I I think I met you, I don't. It wasn't. I don't even think the part was available at all. I just had it in my head. I was like, that this is going to be like a five year plan kind of thing. That's really what uh, what I wanted to do. And it wasn't really anything, I mean, it's nothing like anything I've done before. And, um, but there was something about it. There's a, it's just got such a, a pull. Um, and I don't know, I just felt, but even before I even started working on what I might want to try and do with the character and stuff, I just felt like there's something there. And, uh, and you know, I'll keep just needling away to try and try and get it. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad I did it. I'm, I'm so happy it's worked out. I mean, it's, it was such a fun experience, and it's just a fascinating character. It's, it's one of the, it's, it's one of the big characters in in the in, in the 20th century fiction. I mean, it's kind of, it's a, it's a massive honor to play it. So next question for for Zoe. We Okay, so so can I don't know. Also, I'm so afraid I can't. There are things I can't say, Matt. But I can say I can say what I. What can I, I think say? so. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. I mean, okay. don't give right? away like the biggest. Twist. No, no, no. Of course. Yeah. 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 Say anything you want. Okay. No so, spoiler. um, Celine is working at a club which is run oh, by. No. Totally kidding. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh God. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm so afraid to say something I'm not supposed no, to say. Say anything you want. Okay. So Selena is working at a club um, that's kind of you know run by the Penguin and mobsters and in, in, in Gotham, and um, there are some connections between some of these mobsters um, and someone that's gone missing, and Batman's trying to put all these pieces together, and he has a hunch that Selena might have some information. And there's also a friend of hers that she's looking for that's also involved in this case. So we have something that we need from each other from a very early point. And it's an interesting game of cat and mouse where we kind of, you know, we're interested in each other. We don't really trust each other. We're kind of using each other. And um, it's a really interesting journey that we go on emotionally. And, um, you know, she's a big mystery t t to Batman. And I think he's really intrigued by that. And um, both of these people, I think, have a hard time, um, you know, finding anyone that understands them, you know, and they are so different. They come from completely different backgrounds, but um, there's this connection between them that I think neither of them ha have ever experienced. So it's, it's quite romantic, actually, as Rob said one day. Like, didn't you say that about the end of the film? You were talking about how you romantic. You said when we were shooting one of the last scenes <laughs> of the movie. Yeah. We were shooting that scene, you said, this is quite romantic. I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> a tear but, came out um, the bottom of my cowl. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite things about Selena in this film is that you really can't get a handle on her. You think she's one thing and she kind of shifts into something else and you think that this is her intention and it's actually something else. Like she just is constantly kind of um, peeling off these different layers and you can't really get a handle on her and it's, it's a really fun ride. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Louis. So my last question is uh, is for Matt and Dylan. 就是在这个这部影片显然是在这个疫情爆发期间制作的一部影片。那么作为一个电影人，其实我非常好奇，你们是怎么克服这个疫情的困难，然后去做出这么一部呃漂亮的、优秀的制作的？那么这个疫情对
as Dylan says, I really have to give it to these guys because the most vulnerable spot on the set is in front of the camera, right? I mean, they're putting themselves emotionally in front of everybody, you know, constantly so that we can tell a story. And these guys were doing more than that because not only were they putting themselves there emotionally, but they were willing to risk themselves in a pact that we all had together. We all said we would be sort of bonded to this and all protect each other, which is what we did. Everyone was very careful wearing masks. But, you know, these guys were really, they took a leap. And it, it really, I found it very moving. And I think, you know, it's interesting how I even think in a certain way it, it, it does affect the movie. You know, it's, it's um, their level of commitment is, is really visible on screen. You know, not that you're aware that we were in the pandemic, but just... Um, there's, there's something about what's going on in this city that permeates the energy that was coming from everybody being in this kind of vulnerable, somewhat frightened state, even as they were doing it. And I think um, it's amazing what they did. And I, I'm, we can't thank them enough. Okay, thank you all for your time. And uh, I, I have to add one thing. The last question is also a fan question. We collected from uh, millions of DC fans in China. We all love you guys. We all love this franchise, but we hope you can be safe during the uh, produ production process. And so uh, thank you all again for your time for your fans, for DC fans in China. Thank you, Matt, Dylan, Zoe, and Robert. Maybe, I hope one day you can come to China to do a premiere or something. We can uh, we can sit down and talk face to face. And also thank you, uh, uh, so this is all for today. Thank you all. Best wishes for all. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You so Thank much. you. Bye 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 bye. 好了，感谢各位粉丝观看，请记住，你正在观看的是二零二一年的 DC 粉丝嘉年华 ，DC Fans of China。我们还有更多属于中国 DC 粉丝的独家精彩内容，请保持关注哦。